All right, welcome to today's virtual story time hike. Since yeah. it's a little bit cold, we're going to do um, a kind of winter theme book. So today's book is called Winter Bees and Other Poems yeah. of the Cold by Joyce Sidman and Rick Allen. Yeah. Dream of the tundra swan, dusk fell, and the cold came creeping, came prickling into our hearts. As we tucked beaks into feathers and settled for sleep, our wings knew. That night, we dreamed the journey, ice blue sky and the yodel of flight, the sun's pale wafer, the crisp drink of clouds. We dreamed ourselves so far aloft that the earth curved beneath us and nothing sang but a whistling V of light. When we woke, we were covered with snow. We rose in a billow of white. So why do birds migrate as winter approaches? Because the best spots for raising chicks are not always the best places to spend the winter. True to their name, tundra swans, breed in the treeless tundra of the far northern Canada, Canada and the tundra of the far, of far northern Canada and Alaska. Some are in these Arctic regions, bathed in almost 24 hours of sunlight. Can you imagine the sun out almost 24 hours a day? It's bountiful and lush. Swans feed and raise young on new, thank you, new shoots in aquatic plants. But when the weather turns cold, they move in huge flocks to staging areas along river deltas or marshes where the water is still free of ice. Here they rest and eat until the time is right for the 2,000 mile journey to warmer coastal areas such as New Jersey or California. 2,000 miles! It's a long flight. During migration, tundra swans fly in the V formation at up to 5,000 feet and keep track of one another with a high warbling call. Snake's lullaby. Brother, sister, flip your tongue and taste the slit, the flakes of autumn sun. Use these last few hours of gold to travel, travel toward the cold. Before your coils grow stiff and dull, your heartbeat slows to winter's law. See the sink of sheltered stones that safely cradle sleeping bones. Brother, sister, find the way back to the deep and tranquil bay, and around each other twist and fold to weave a heavy cloak of cold. So snakes, like other reptiles, are ectothermic, meaning outwardly heated. With no constant inner temperature, they bask in the sun to warm themselves, and in cold weather they become sluggish. Before autumn's warmth turns to winter, they must find a protected place to hibernate or they will freeze to death. Garter snakes often hibernate, or brumate, as it's called in reptiles. In large groups, choosing underground tunnels, rocks, or caves below the frost line where the temperature is cool but not freezing. Most return to the same hiber hiberniculum year after year using their tongues to smell their way along age-old paths. Did you know snakes use their tongue to smell? Isn't that crazy? In Manitoba, Canada, scientists have discovered hi hiberniculums that host up to 20,000 garter snakes. While brumating, snakes neither eat nor drink. Their breathing and heart rate slow down and their blood thickens. They spend the winter in a communal mass of motionless bodies waiting for warmth. Hopefully, as it gets warmer, you'll find some garter snakes in your area. They're really good snakes to have in your yard, and um, they're harmless. So don't be afraid of them. They're good snakes to have. Snowflakes wake. Snowflake wakes, whirling, arms outstretched, lace browning from fingertips, leaps laughing in a dizzy cloud, a pinwheel gathering glitter, drops 
lights into the air, suddenly soft and full of lattice of stars spinning silently. Thank you. Drift down, touching and tickling, clinging and clumping. Hugs earth, sighs and settles, sleeps, tucks, tucks in its own blanket. Not yet. We haven't gotten to the beaver story. Snowflakes begin in clouds where tiny water droplets freeze into ice. If the air is cold enough and there is plenty of moisture, bits of crystals form, which are six-sided because of the shape of the molecules that make up water itself. As these crystals swirl in the cloud, more and more water vapor freezes onto their surface and they begin to grow, gathering ice on each of their six points. Every snow crystal is slightly different because each follows a random path through the air as it grows. When the crystals are heavy enough, they drop from the cloud and fall, colliding, colliding and clinging to other crystals to form the snowflakes we see. Once snowflakes touch the ground, their delicate lace begins to break down and form a more solid layer of snow. Big brown moose. I'm a big brown moose. I'm a rascally moose. I'm a moose with a tough shaggy hide. And I kick and I prance in a long legged dance with my moose mama close by my side. I shrug off the cold and I sneeze at the wind and I swir swivel my ears in the snow. And I tramp and I tromp over forest and swamp, because there's nowhere a moose cannot go. I'm a big brown moose, and a rav I'm a ravenous moose, as I hunt for the willow and you. With a snort and a crunch, I rip off a bunch, and I chew, and I chew, and I chew. Yum. When together we slump in a comfortable slump, my mountainous mama and I, I give her a nuzzle, a velvety muzzle. Our frosty breath drifts to the sky. I'm a big brown moose. I'm a slumberous moose. I'm a moose with a warm, snuggly hide. And I bask in the moon as the coyotes croon yeah, yeah. with my moose mama close by my side. So moose are built for the cold as the largest moose for cold as the longest member is no touch Nathan. Yeah. Do you want to help read? They're the largest members of the deer family. They have huge bodies that trap heat well and their fur is dense and warm. Their stilt like legs wade through deep snow drifts and snow covered brush with ease and broad cloven hooves steady them in icy terrain. Winter's main challenge for moose is to find enough plant material to power their enormous bulk. They are constantly on the lookout for food. Moose cows give birth in spring to single calf or occasionally twins. And the calf's survival depends fully on the mother's ability to teach it the ways of the woods. Moose cow and calf are rarely apart. They shelter together, evade wolves, and use their large sensitive noses to seek out strands of nutritious willow and poplar twigs. They remain inseparable until the following spring when the yearling calf must leave to make way for another newborn. Oh, this one. So this next one is about bees. Bee Winter bees, we are an ancient tribe of hardy scrum, born with eyelash legs <coughs> and 
tinsel uh, wings. We are nothing on our own. Um, Together we are one. We scaled a million blooms to reap the summer's glow. Now in the merciless cold we share each morsel of heat, each honeyed crumb. We cram to a sizzling ball to warm our queen, our heart, our home. Alone we would falter and drop a dot on the canvas of snow. Together we boil, we team, we hum. Deep in the winter hive, we burn like a golden sun. Honeybees hang together at all times, but especially in winter. They are one of the few insects in the northern hemisphere that remain active in freezing weather, and they do it in typical bee fashion. By gathering, sharing, and communicating, all summer they collect nectar, which they transform into honey in, a wax, in wax covered cells. As the air turns colder, bees begin to cluster around their queen, who represents the future of the hive. The colder it gets, the tighter they huddle, shrinking to a football sized mass that slowly eats its way through the carefully stored honey. Honey, hungry hive mates farther from the honeycomb will beg for food, which is then passed from bee to bee when hive temperatures drop to dangerous levels. The outer rim bees sound the alarm and the cluster begins to shiver, flex their flight muscles to generate heat while worker bees cycle in and out of the cluster's warm center. The queen remains at, the, at its heart ready to resume her egg laying at the first sign of spring. So I think we're going to leave off on this one and finish it tomorrow. But as it gets warmer, you may be seeing some bees. I've already seen a couple, a little cold for them today, but you can look around. So for today's after story time, I would love for you to look around and see what signs of nature that and animals that you can find that may be signs that an animal is here hibernating or doing something for the winter like earlier this week we found where all the squirrels have been digging up their acorns where they had buried them to eat all winter so look around um, and find places like here we may see all in this brush you see how there's all those dead leaves, Oops, sorry, see all those dead leaves? Often bugs will probably stay under there and to keep warm. That's kind of their winter home. And another good place to look is under rocks. But you wanna make sure you put the rocks back where they belong or if you've had pieces of wood laying around that's a place where they like to hide out too. So we have, sorry guys, we have this piece of wood and oh, look, you can see slug, another slug, I think, oh, and there's another one. So you can see that's where they've been hiding all winter. So let's put their home back so that they can stay warm for the next couple days until it starts becoming more spring-like. So how, how about you go around either your backyard or your neighborhood looking for signs of animals or insects hibernating um, and share your adventures with us and what you found. All right, well, I hope you had a good time and we will finish the book tomorrow. Thanks, good day, bye.